Hi, you know nothing. <laughs> this is the defendant lobby, all right, but there's no defendants. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma for that matter? It's almost as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Edge Edgeworth. Edgeworth. Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 777777 ID number is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Edgy meme ward. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. So Edgeworth knows the truth as well. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt room will remain. After all, Isa hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes, right? And Chief Prosecutor Skye will be found guilty. But she didn't do it. I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Edgeworth isn't pursuing a guilty verdict, he's pursuing the truth. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth. Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? Sergio, it's going to be helping us out today. This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gan has on has on Lana Sky, it's now. True, he'll think about it. That's concerning. Court is now in session for this for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. But before that, the Gant Gant here, Chief Gant. He's not an idiot. Morning, folks. How's everything doing? Hey, Aji, been back to the pool yet? No, oh, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. So, frick this. Ho oh, ho, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. <laughs> yeah, the judge is great. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, what exactly is this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me to see if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. He's gone and he's gone and pressured her. That's so clear. That's what ha what's happened. What's this all about, Defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request, and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? Yeah, Gant. Gant's evil. I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! She's goddamn confessing again. You can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. 
In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your... Damn! But Lana... Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. No, no, Lana, we need to prove it beyond a reasonable, beyond reasonable doubt. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. That's a good point. Nothing in this game is beyond reasonable doubt. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial. Even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. Shit, we're actually relying on Edgeworth here to do something. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... Objection! Oh, thank God, Edgeworth. One moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty. Yes! Edgeworth, beyond reasonable doubt, thank you. Any ruling at this stage would, be cer would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. Oh, Edgy's pissed at the SO9 incident. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to who? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma. Oh shit. I request the court hears her testimony. That's Lana. Yeah. <laughs> she, he is deliberately pissing off Lana here. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to averse one's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Sky. Please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Chief Gan is the evil mastermind, definitely. That that has just convinced me. Like, I mean, we already were convinced earlier, but... <laughs> Lana told us, basically. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my, my name is Emma. Emma Sky. My my occupation? I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please. This trial concerns the, mur the murder of Detective Goodman. There's an incident that was resolved two years ago. Really all that relevant? Yeah, the SL9 case. Yes, it most certainly is. <laughs> the judge just... Thank you, judge. Thank you for being clueless. Well, okay then. 
He sure gave in fast. Now... Please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Yeah, Phoenix is the only new element. And the judge, I suppose. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised up his knife and... and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? You stabbed man. <laughs> that will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Okay, did I notice any contradictions? Oh, that's... That's... I... That is one thing I dislike about this case. It sticks a contradiction in your face, and there's something else you have to do before you can point it out. That must have been a real shock. Even now, when I close my eyes, I can still see it just as clearly. Tell us, what were you doing at that moment? I believe you testified that Joe Dark was holding you hostage. Honestly, silly case, Lambton. When lightning struck and the lights went out, Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark, and I was thrown aside and the two began wrestling each other. I'm pretty sure I was watching them. Emma doesn't have any reason to lie. Uh, but Lana sure does. I need to get Emma to tell me- oh god. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second in command under then Deputy Chief of Police Gant. My sister. She was the best detective ever. Amicans? Oh gosh. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Scott used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk. And dream about playing that organ. Oh god, that organ. I wanted to play it that day too. Yeah, Malboy. Now, boy, Kelvin. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man came running in and took me... I can already saw that. You were sure an ace attorney character. A man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a... a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When we saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic, because the elevator was going up. Then, he ran into Sky and Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I... Opened the door to have a good look. That's when I saw him. What was the prosecution doing? What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Dark's questioning. Deputy Chief Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marsh. Marshall. That's a good note. Gant was there on that day. Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room right after the ceremony. 
I assume this would be that would also be why he was the first to run off the dock. When Doc grabbed me, I I thought I was as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I I don't clearly remember what happened then, but Can you tell us about that? What the... Controller? Mr. Marshall jumped on dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you should have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman. Victim. I want to hear more. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw. Yes, but at the time the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture on the back of the evidence list we found in Gant's office. Well, Mr. Wright. Have you heard enough? I'd like to ask about the picture. This picture the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Y yes, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl put all her heart into, the, into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its existence? Huh? <laughs> we betrayed him. <laughs> hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the S09 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over? Turn it over? Ah, what's this? Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it. That's the picture I drew. Indeed. Two men appear to be rustling here. What, what's the meaning of this? What are two... What are you doing with that list? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Oh? These lists, they're... They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from one another. Hidden evidence. Gant again hiding evidence. Because we found that in Gant's desk. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order, order. But Miss Sky, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor. Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. What an expression. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's 
Oh! That's a good point. She would have drawn it before it was torn. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see. Whoa! Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? <laughs> what did he say? What's on it? Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that... that thing. <laughs> it's the blue badger! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Uh, why? <laughs> it's back. We thought we got rid of it. That, that's that thing. That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. <laughs> Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper. <laughs> Very well, witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, yeah, yes, sir, Your Honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. No. But the, but the blue badger didn't exist two years ago. What? She couldn't have actually seen it, could she? This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark was about to murder Neil Marshall. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. This is interesting. Like, I, I found... <laughs> this is the picture I drew to you. I can't get over the blue badger. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. At first, I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the investigation team was reorganised. Detective Goodman was placed in charge. Under the direction of Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Two or three days later, Memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? So at the time, you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who had come to your rescue? No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around, and that's when the lightning flashed. <laughs> Poor Emma, I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? You mean you didn't see the actual murder take place? No, I'm I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. 
Roles reversed. Anyway, this picture... This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instance. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course, this is the exact same. It wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives? Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not. I'd better watch out or he might find some way to cut my salary. <laughs> I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives. So I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh well. That's strange. She claims this is the exact scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. A really dumb idea, and if it's this, I'm gonna be mad at the game. Actually, I've got two ideas. <laughs> Don't be mad at the game! As if that's the answer. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But, but I still remember it like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out- Oh, fuck. <laughs> Uh, if it's wrong, we have a save state. Yes, we got it! Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see it's... You're kidding me. You're kidding me. It's a broken knife that it was drawn. Oh, the drawing does stink. I thought it was just like she could only, she couldn't necessarily see it was a knife. She could just see an object in his hands. Are you kidding me? That it, that I had to point out that it was the tip. Even older, even I don't have to look too closely to see that. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken too. If I recall. The tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that pro proved Joe Dark was the murderer. Yeah, that's what it was essentially. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. Objection! And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Oh! What's the meaning of this? Yeah, everyone in court is a two-head. Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. No, the tip was found in the victim. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. Yeah, I know, that's a dumb move by Edgeworth. The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time, but she was sure she remembered it correctly. What? There's no other way to explain this inconsistency. It wasn't the murder weapon. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah. Oh. Yeah, poor Edgy. Order, order, order. Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, 
please allow me to again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. I... I'm not lying. The man was really holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been an actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? I don't think there was. Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm right. Wait a minute. Oh shit! Okay, okay. I know exactly what's going on now. Holy shit. If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instance, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume then that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of this is the picture of the award ceremony. Uh, ah! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the the broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's a broken knife. As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from that award. Order, order, order. Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shielded knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in that dangerous situation. But that, that cannot be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! This is leading exactly where I'm suspecting it is. But the Prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait! I... I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back? I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. She did draw the badger. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. 
I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. How? What is that, Badger? This should be interesting. Oh, God. When I saw when I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and ru It is it is what I think it is. I think I I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, and I'm sure I saw his shadow. This is certainly most unusual. Objection! Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even didn't even design him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the friends may begin its. Stop! Please don't pursue this any further. Yeah, it's leading right where I thought it is. What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Sex stuff. Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. Yeah, we're getting to the right one. It's right what I'm thinking it is. Because Neil Marshall's shirt. What do you mean, you think? It, it all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly, but I did. It's all kind of a blur. The sky was almost killed before she was to witness the murder about to take place, with so much happening in the matter of seconds. A little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person, who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then what happened? Hold it. I'm gonna press on these two statements. Are you sure about this? Of course. See? I even drew a picture of him there. What? It was the chief of detectives who thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. You like to think the blue badger is designed from this picture? Maybe actually. Now I finally remember. Oh brother, just when you thought that the thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the world do you see him dancing? Emma should sue for copyright. His shadow. So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? Oh god. That's right, and I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. This witness must be mistaken. Objection. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation. If so, by all means, please tell us what this show is. What was it Emma saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger really? Yeah, 
Good thing I freaking checked. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looks similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instance? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. The mysterious blue badger was in fact this. Well that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this form. <laughs> yeah, this looks better as well. There we go! Hey, we did it! Well, is this a miracle or what? No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. God fucking damn it. I hate this rotating thing. No, it can't be. Aura, aura. The defense has proved its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So the badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. I don't like being right in this situation, I don't. Indeed. Very well then, please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. It's about the location. It's where the jar was in the room. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Skye's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes. And it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying that the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's side of, of the office to Lana Sky's office? Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason to hide the true murder weapon and the true murderer. If there wasn't a, if there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? To hide the true murder weapon. I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now though. Have you figured it out, Kelvin? Please recall this witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent that jar flying? Neil Marshall being pushed backwards. The impact the man made when he was docked into the wall? 
Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more, but you're going to find out right now, Kelvin. What's by the wall? If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Oh. Ah! The, the suit of armor holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No, Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes, there is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea. But nevertheless... I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Stabbed through the back. Emma killed him. You mean, Mr. Marshall died because of me? No! She fainted. Yeah, she fainted. Fuck, poor Emma. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. Oh, lion's pissed. Oh, the banger. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky. But given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that. Coming from you. Ah oh, yeah, the person who forges evidence. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. We have proof. We have the proof. That's the worst part about it. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. We do, and we do, Lana. Don't make us present it. Yes, it would certainly be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we will have to rely on testimony. Yeah, the fabric. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to... Phoenix, you, ha you have a spirit medium on speed dial. Call her. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Cole Meyer. Hmm. Touche, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, the possibility that the victim has left us a. Shit, not this, not this. Please, not this. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one manner or another. I saw this and I did not want to say this. I did not want to have to do this. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, you're right, original. The vase is in the evidence. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Yeah, name written in blood. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Miss Sky. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. Oh, I didn't want to check it, I wanted to present it. This is the message left by the deceased. Yeah, we need the truth, not the evidence. <laughs> this is the blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten that this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. Looks like someone wipes the blood away. Yeah, they're all two heads to forget it was a jar. Lana can tell. Yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Specifically, the fragment in Gant's safe, which he kept as leverage on Lana. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points and the victim's message will become apparent. No! Yeah, connect the dots time. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. Connect the dots. Yes. Yes, we know it was the murderer's name. Connect, please. Yeah, of course. Can I connect this one too? Okay, I can't. Yeah. It's a defense's it's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. Shit. Gant. See, worthy, can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant. Do you understand the implications of what you've just done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in that case, were you not? That is Damon Gant's theme, Kelvin. Ugh. Yes, worthy. 
Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. Yeah, it's scary. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. Then it needed to be proven, Phoenix. We don't know that. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We are defenders of justice. We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. Oh shit. Gant. Gant is. Order, 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 order. The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. <laughs> Where this trial is headed, no one knows. All right, all right. As usual, for the YouTube people, not for the Twitch people, just the YouTube people, I'm gonna sort of cut it off here. Thank you for watching this video. If you wanna see more, make sure to like and subscribe. If you wanna see these live, I generally stream them on Twitch at Kthram. And if you want any updates on streams and videos, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Kth underscore Ram.